is the average Bramble teen from the Bramble Public Library. A place where we discuss life as a teen, pop culture, and anything else that pops to our heads. You heard? Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hello everybody. Welcome to a special episode for the Average Bro with Teens. This is Andres, and I'd like to introduce to you my cohorts. To you. Okay. Your boy Q. Lily. Jay. Jordan. Michael. Karen. All right, guys. So today we're going to interview Mr. Losner. And um, for our first question. Where did you grow up? Okay, I grew up in Levittown, which is in Nassau County. Um, I was born a long time ago. I'm not going to give you my age. Uh, I grew 26. up. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I knew I was going to like this group. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I grew up in Levittown. Went to, actually didn't go to uh, public school. I actually went to a Catholic grammar school, wow. St. Bernard's which I think is still there. However, my high school is no longer there. It actually closed. Wow. How was it like living there? What high school did you go to? Levittown was a great, great town to grow up in. It was a very simple time. Uh, you know, what I remember most about it was, oh, I had a block full of kids. And in those days, we really, we actually did get a TV when I was about four or five years old. Prior to that, we didn't even have a TV. And all we did on the block was play sports. So we'd go outside in the uh, spring, play baseball and street hockey and football and basketball, and that's kind of what we did every day. Sounds good. <laughs> where did you go to college? Do you have any advice for high school students considering where to go to college and what to study? Wow, that's a great question. Uh, I've actually been uh, to a number of different colleges. Uh, for various reasons. Uh, you know, I tried uh, my hand at baseball and, and uh, you know, I realized uh, although I was pretty good in high school, was not that great in college. So I uh, <laughs> had to change my college. But I ended up graduating. I have a degree in pure mathematics, uh, an undergraduate and a graduate degree in pure mathematics from Stony Brook. Wow. So advice for high school students. Well, you know, I have to be honest with you, it's, it's so uh, much more uh, difficult now, I think, for kids. Uh, you know, hearkening back, again, I said it was an easier time when I was growing up. Now the choices are endless, uh, you know, for degrees. So, uh, you know, I, I'd say carefully consider every college. Obviously, you know, finances has to be a number one. Well, not necessarily the number one, but it has to be a consideration. Um, but, uh, you know, go and visit the college first because you have to make sure that it's comfortable to you. Uh, and you'll know right away if you walk onto a campus. I hear this all the time. When they walk onto a campus, they either know right away that it is for them and they'll know right away if it's not for them. For some reason, kids have, are dialed into that. Uh, but in terms of a degree, you know, uh, you have to carefully consider what your passions are. And, you know, uh, again, there are so many different options. I highly recommend the, uh, well, first of all, I obviously recommend teaching. It's a great degree. Uh, it's, a great, uh, it's a great career choice. But the medical field obviously is growing tremendously. So I, I highly recommend that to kids to consider some type of uh, avenue in medicine, whether it's technicians, nursing, Doctors, there's just uh, the the uh, the possibilities are endless. What do you miss about being a teacher and principal? Uh, actually, this this is what I miss. I miss being in the schools. Uh, yeah, I, actually, I shouldn't say that. I'm in schools every day. I go to two to three schools, sometimes four and five every day. But I don't have the relationship, unfortunately, with kids that I I did have. Uh, when I was a teacher and a principal, I get to see the same kids every single day, and that's the part that I miss the most. And and I, um, you know, I'm I'm very glad to be I'm very happy to be superintendent. I'm doing things that uh, I think are helping uh, kind of the school district globally, but I I really do miss the interaction with kids every day. Yeah, you were my principal, 2012. I, I remember. <laughs> I remember you. <laughs> I used to dance in the hallways. <laughs> That was me. <laughs> Go ahead, I, I remember when you, when you helped my sister with the on the track team. That's right. Oh, my gosh. I remember. I remember. Yeah, those those uh, daily interactions with kids are kind of what makes uh, education special. Wow. 
Wow. So how's my brother? <laughs> you tell me. How's your brother doing? When, when he was in your care. Oh, he. You know what? I. I. You know what? I. I don't know how he's doing. I'm sure he's doing fine. I mean, I had a lot of fun back then, but that was a while ago, right? That was I was first his principal at South Middle, right? And I thought so. Okay. What are your goals and your position as superintendent? Well, I have uh, lots of different goals uh, as as uh, the superintendent. I mean, number one, it's not unlike uh, the principal. I, I want to make sure that every kid, every student has a great, uh, you know, has a great experience in whatever school they're in, whether it's uh, UPK all the way up to high school. You know, I hope to have some type of influence on their uh, world in school. Obviously, I'm always looking to raise the rigor in classrooms, so I'm trying to impact the instruction uh, in schools. Uh, I'm also trying to, uh, you know, uh, bring in programs that kind of uh, kind of help the student grow as a, as a whole person, uh, not just academically, but also socially and emotionally. And I think we're having some successes there across the district. Um, also, my uh, number one goal as a principal really is to make sure that there are people in the right positions uh, to do that job that I just described. So, number one, you know, it's my priority to hire great teachers. Uh, every single teacher that we hired last year, I'm pretty happy with. The ones that I'm not won't be around. Uh, so, as a superintendent, I want to make sure every single teacher that is hired under my uh, tenure is outstanding. Um, that's that's uh, also, that's a priority, and also every administrator. I'm very happy. I had to hire. Uh, a, pr a couple of principals and uh, assistant principals last year. And I'm very happy with uh, their performance, and, and uh, I'll continue to monitor that. But I also want to make sure that administrators are the best. Uh, if not, we'll have to move on to another choice. Nice. Uh, I, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So, like, what do you look for in a teacher? Like, <laughs> that's a great. That's a great question. What do you look for? Well, n number one, it's it's actually one of the hardest things to do uh, in a short-term interview. I mean, but however, we do have teachers come in, give demo lessons, and you get to learn a little bit about how they interact with kids. But your number one, there's actually a, a few number ones uh, in, in hiring a teacher. Uh, you always want to hire smart, okay? So I'm always looking to make sure the teacher is as smart as possible and knows their subject area uh, cold. You really do, and you want to also determine that they're uh, passionate about whatever subject they're teaching. If they're a science teacher or an English or a math, you have to kind of do your best to make sure they love that subject because in that subject they're going to grow themselves and they're also going to help their students. And and the final piece of the puzzle is you got to make sure they love kids. Uh, and that's, that's, um, that's also sometimes... Well, it's not so difficult once you see them in their in their world as to become a teacher, but in the in interview process, that's what you're kind of trying to coax out of them that they 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 genuinely care about kids. Um, would you ever want to be a president? <laughs> this I I saw this question and I'm like. N absolutely not. I knew it. <laughs> this this job actually, there's a lot of politics in this job. Uh, you want to be the president of the board? That, yeah, well, the president of the board, the the uh, the community, and you know what? I'm I'm not so good at politics, so I think this is probably the end of the line for me. Right here. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you think about Brentwood Screen Machine right now? Well, I mean, I. The Brentwood Green Machine is one of my favorite uh, organizations within Brentwood. I think that the, uh, first I think the instructors, uh, beginning with Mr. Sittler, I think they're flat out, he, he's wonderful, he's fantastic. Uh, the kids themselves, I mean, and I know many of you are in, in the Green Machine, and I absolutely love the kids, and I, I think their dedication is second to none. They've probably heard me give the speech every year, I kind of, touch on the same thing when I meet with the kids that uh, they they start in August and I always get a kick out of this to tell you the truth they're in section 11 which governs ac uh, athletics in Suffolk County that's called section 11 there are rules that you in the summertime you can only practice until 10 o'clock so if you're a f football player 
a soccer player, they practice till 10 o'clock and then they have to take a break and then they can come back in later in the afternoon at, at 4 o'clock and they can practice again for, for another two hours and they're very strict. So I always get a kick out of that because then I look out on the field in a hot day in August and the green machine is like they're marching from 9 o'clock till 6 o'clock at night without a break and by the end of the summertime they've worn out a field that used to be green and by the time they're done marching it's dirt <laughs> they've, they've uh they've literally put in hours upon hours of uh of practice and dedication so that's what really i, I admire the kids and the staff because they put in a tremendous amount of time then finally the parents the Brentwood Green Machine parents are incredibly, they're an incredibly dedicated bunch. Uh, they also put in a tremendous amount of time and energy. You've seen them volunteer. They're, they, they, uh, you know, they sell things in the evening to night school in order to raise funds to help uh, send the kids on trips and buy uniforms. And uh, many of the parents who have kids graduate uh, two, three, four years, they're still part of the Green Machine family. So it's an incredibly dedicated bunch. Wow. Uh, do you have any advice for dealing with a difficult teacher? Oh, and by the way, this is my first time ever meeting you, so okay. it's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Oh, uh, nice. So, wait, now, do you mean from a student standpoint or for, from my standpoint? It says, do you have any advice on dealing with a difficult teacher? So I guess you're looking uh, from a student standpoint. Yeah, okay. student. Okay. Yeah, that's actually a great question. You know, unfortunately, you know, first of all, I think, you know, Brentwood is, we have a fabulous staff. I think the teachers are tremendous. Uh, but unfortunately, there are, you know, times, no matter what, um, when you have 20,000 students and almost 1,400 teachers, there are going to be some interactions that are not so great. So how to deal with a difficult teacher is a great question. Number one, I'd always say be respectful. Um, you know, uh, uh, even if you feel a, an adult in the building is not being respectful to you uh, as a student. And first of all, if that does happen, I'm, I'm going to apologize in advance uh, as a superintendent. I'm never happy to hear that. Uh, but I would always ask the students who I can always count on to be respectful, um, even if the situation is not going the way you'd like. Uh, that's that's number one. Also, follow any directives um, if they tell you to do something. Otherwise, I mean, within reason, of course, if it's something that's completely out of line, don't don't follow that directive. But if they give you a directive, you know, take out your book or, you know, turn over your ID badge or, you know, show me a pass, I would recommend you do that. And then, uh, you know, uh, if you can't work it out with a teacher, I certainly would try that first to say if you could uh, maybe speak to him or her after class and have a, a, an adult conversation. But if that's not working, I'd always let your parents know that you're having a difficult time. They're your, your number one advocates, so they can make that phone call if you're, you know, if you haven't uh, actually worked things out with the teacher. Have your folks give a call. And never hesitate to find an administrator in the building. If you feel that you ha are not getting a fair shake from a teacher and you've tried all of those things I just said, I would recommend that you see an administrator and explain to them, uh, you know, him or her exactly what is going on and they, they should be able to help. Finally, give me a call. I don't know about it. <laughs> What do, you, what do you do in your spare time? What do I do in my spare time? <laughs> Unfortunately, with this job, there's not so much. Uh, the, the leisure time has been reduced significantly. Uh, well, I've, I don't know if you guys know. You probably do. Uh, I ride motorcycles. So wow. I love to ride motorcycles. That's number one. I also love woodworking. So I, I, I enjoy uh, building furniture. A lot. Now my uh, kids are old enough, so I, I kind of would work with my uh, sons. So that's, a, that's my uh, second thing. I love to read as well. So that's, that's it, my leisure time. What kind of motorcycles do you ride? Uh, well, I have a Triumph right now. Uh, I've never owned, I know you're going to ask me if I own, have ever owned a Harley. I never have. Oh. Uh, for some reason, I don't know, I always avoid them, but I'm probably going to go. To the Harley? I'll grab a Harley one day. Oh, you know, right. But I like Triumphs. <laughs> I like uh, Suzuki's. Oh. You know, I've had a Honda. 
but uh, right now I have a triumph, which I like because I like to think I, I'm like Steve McQueen. So oh, that's why. Oh, the coolest <laughs> guy in the world. I know Steve McQueen. <laughs> okay, so we have a couple of lightning round questions for you. Okay. Um, what are you doing? Um, wait a minute. Do you have any secret talents? No. <laughs> 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 what no, is your dream? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Go ahead. Should I go back to the talent thing? Yeah, I don't think I have any. I really don't know if I have any secret talents. Uh, no, not sure if I do. Okay. Okay. What is your dream non traditional pet? What is my dream non traditional? I should have yeah, like looked like this one over. So no. Oh, y- you know what? I would love to own a pig. That's what I want to oh. own. Oh, yeah. I yeah, <laughs> I hear they make great pets. Oh, so like a regular size pig or like a mini pig? I don't think they. I don't think the miniature pigs exist. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah they, they do. do. No, they, they do have. Do. Hey, guys, tell me. I know. We searched this up pigs? so many times. Really? We yes. have. Yes. It's just, a, it's just a baby pig. That's oh, it. And then they let you let it grow. No, there's oh, like okay. pigs during like. <laughs> I, <laughs> They're built little. My pet. Serious, <laughs> que- serious question: Yankees or Mets? I love the Yankees. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I am not one of these rabbit fans that Uh-oh. that you know does, does not root for the other team. When the Mets are winning, I like it. So when it's May and April and May and the Mets are winning, I'm very excited for them. But then come June, July, and August, they're usually not winning. But the Yankees, I've always been a Yankee fan. I love them. Nice. I didn't mean to insult any Met fans there. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> um, what is the last book you read? Um, the last book I read is is a, uh, I'm certain it's a John Gordon book. I don't know if you've read any John Gordon book. It's kind of um, uh, really kind of a leadership book um, type of uh, and, and kind of like a self-help type of uh, author he's he's kind of been making the rounds the energy bus I don't know if you've heard of that or the seed it's actually a great book very easy reads uh, and I'm also reading you asked me about leadership before we spoke about it um, oh my gosh I can't remember it's it's something about leadership I can't remember it but I, I love to read those books as well mm, okay Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what, what sparked you to, 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 like, read? Like, you know, like, what? I have always been a, a reader. When I was uh, young, I told you that, you know, we really didn't have, uh, you know, uh, TV till I was probably about four or five. I was a, a voracious reader, so uh, I literally would be up at night, um, you know, reading my Zane Grey, which, if you guys, that's a, a, a Western. I love Louis L'Amour and Zane Grey when I was a kid. Those were uh, Western writers. I, I, I thought that was cool. And uh, so now I just, I always try to have at least one or two books going. I also have a, a book um, that I pick up on the weekends, and that's... Um, Believe it or not, I, I bought it when I was at the JFK Museum. So it's Letters from John F. Kennedy. And uh, it's actually a great book. It's a very large book. It's all of the letters that he wrote before, he wrote and received um, before becoming president and as president. And uh, I get a kick out of it because at that t- those days, you know, people wrote letters to communicate. So it was really neat to uh, to read all of the letters that he re- he received as a young man and then wrote as a president. So I kind of get a kick out of that. I don't know how you Did you ever try writing a, a short story or book? N- n- I, you know, every once in a while you, you think you, you can write and then you start and realize you can't. And that's pretty <laughs> much what I've done. I, so no, I've never really gotten anywhere in terms of writing. Oh, okay. Um, do you have a favorite food? Weird food combination. Actually, I love peanut butter and banana. Is oh. that is that considered a weird food? No, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't think so. No. But I love peanut butter, peanut butter and banana. We had that as a kid all the time, so I, I still have it. I love <laughs> smashed potatoes and raisins. They taste so good. <laughs> that is the worst thing I've ever heard. Do you like Hawaiian pizza? Cold hot. Wait, is that with pineapples on it? Yes. Stuff? Yeah, I've had that. That's good. Wait, wait, wait. Important question. Orange juice or apple juice? I like orange juice better than apple juice. Yeah. 
My first haircut? Oh, your worst. worst haircut. Oh, my worst haircut? Yeah. Well, again, when you grew up, the age I did, yeah, it, the bowl haircut. You know, <laughs> if you look back at some of your pictures, uh, I had the, the typical bowl haircut. Did you have the coconut head? I probably did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, Quincy. Who was your favorite superhero? Um... I think Batman is my uh, no. favorite yes. superhero. Yes. I like Spider-Man too, though. Oh, okay. Batman. 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 Excluding Batman or Superman? Batman or Superman. Well, don't forget, when I was a kid, these were big shows. Superman wa uh, was a huge show that I never missed. Uh, with par I, you know, uh, he was the uh, newspaper reporter, and Batman was uh, Wayne. Uh, what was his name? Bruce Wayne. Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne, and uh -huh. he was the millionaire. Uh -huh. Both of those were really cool shows. Well, we thought they were cool shows. Now, as you look at them, they actually were pretty corny. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'd say then Superman would be my number one because he could fly. What? Superman. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm saying, excluding those two, well, who would be like a third pick then? <laughs> a third pick? A third pick would be Spider-Man. Oh. It would have to be Spider-Man. John, are your Spidey senses too much? <laughs> 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 Who makes the best sandwich in Brentwood? Mm. Oh, wow. I don't want to hear what it is. Wait a second. Who makes... Are we talking about like a restaurant around yeah. here? Oh, well, yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay, because I do want to say the Sondling Senior Cafeteria. <laughs> 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 I actually have to give them a shout out. If you haven't had one of their their specialty sandwiches, then you haven't you uh, haven't lived. Yeah, I was right. say the meatball sandwich is really good. Yeah, yes, yeah, there you go. Yes, pretty is. mean meatball sandwich. That's the, the ham and cheese meal is perfect. <laughs> That's also another good one. What is your go-to karaoke song? Oh my gosh. And can you sing it? Man, I didn't look at this side of the page here, guys. Um, <laughs> What is my favorite karaoke song? Uh, man, first of all, you you wouldn't really want me to to do karaoke. That's I, I'm always the last resort. Uh, um, oh man. Um, oh, what's that one? Uh, you know what? I can't remember. I guess I, some Elvis songs I used to, used to get a kick out of. I don't know some America songs. I don't. But like I said, I just no one would ever ask me to go to the mic, so I really don't know have a favorite karaoke song. Okay. The last question is water wet. <laughs> is water wet? Yes, is water wet. Is this one of those tricky physics questions that I should know? No. No. <laughs> no. It's a yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, a yes or no answer. with the chicken. What's that? It's like a yes or no question. So it's, like, would... it's like who came first, the chicken or the egg? Right, what came first? Yeah, it's kind of difficult to say, to describe water by, is water wet when wet would be used to describe water? So I don't know. So water okay, no, 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 no. Say... okay, don't start. Okay. A lot, of, <laughs> a lot of people say, which I agree with, something has to be dry in order for it to, to be wet. wet right? So that means water is yeah. dry. Don't start with me, Andres. No. <laughs> How okay, is no, water wait. dry? Okay, if I put... If, water I, is water dry. Dry. if you dry water, there's no water. Then there you go. The well, debate's over. Water <laughs> what? No. If I, if I put water on this paper right now, it will be wet. Why will it be wet? Because I put water on it, and water makes it wet. Water, so water is not wet. So if you put water over water, it's wet. No. What are you talking no. about? You can't make you can't have water to the second power. What are you talking about? You can't wet, wet water. is when you add a liquid to a solid. Exactly. So if you, you have to liquid. add something that's dry. That's when what. That's it, when you add when water, to water. They clearly don't need me on this. <laughs> Andres, if you add oil to water, does that make the oil wet or does that make the water oily? And that will be the next question for the next episode. <laughs> Andres, <laughs> Hello, sir. thank you. You so have no argument. You have no argument. You have no argument. You can't back wait, it up. Wait, we, wait let we, him, love, we contribute with everything that wait, you've done wait, for us. Wait, wait, let him ask you the question. You didn't answer it. Uh, I would have to say yes, it's wet. Oh, no. yeah. no. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Mr. you, guys. No, this, this has been great. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys. What would, you say your, what would you say your favorite thing about the school? 
Oh my God, it, it, it's it's right here. The kids, I think the kids are the best. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Hey guys, thank you for listening to the Average Brentwood Teens Podcast. From the Brentwood Public Library, follow, like, subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere else you can find podcasts. Booyah! Yes.